prioritized, and we should have prioritized certain groups. So I think we've done the right thing there, but also expand the number of sites that are offering vaccination. I think we need to push more of these vaccines through a retail channel and allow people to go into a pharmacy and get vaccinated, particularly elderly Americans. Most of the demand, a lot of the demand is among senior citizens. We ought to make those, these vaccines available to senior citizens and allow some of this supply to reach the demand for the vaccine. The um, task of getting people vaccinated, I think, is becoming more urgent with these new variants that are emerging. It really is a race against time trying to get more vaccine into people's arms before these new variants become more prevalent here in the United States. We now know that the UK uh, variant is probably more prevalent than we first suspected. And the South Africa variant is very concerning right now because it does appear that it may obviate some of our medical countermeasures, particularly the antibody drugs. And right now that, that strain does appear to be prevalent in South America and Brazil, the two parts of the world right now that are in their summer, but also experiencing a very dense epidemic. And that's concerning. You're talking about the South Africa strain. What, what you're saying is that the medicines that we've been using on people that have been keeping them from getting so sick that they might end up dead are not working on that variant. Is that the point? Well, we don't know exactly because we haven't actually seen how this variant has behaved in people who've been treated with these um, different approaches, these antibody drugs. There's now experimental evidence. There's some research out tonight from the Bloom Lab, a very good laboratory, showing that the variant in South Africa does appear to escape uh, convalescent plasma. So it appears to escape prior immunity. Not entirely, but what we, what we believe is that some of the antibodies that people may produce um, when they get infected with COVID and also the antibody drugs may not be quite as effective against this new variant. The, the new variant has uh, mutated a part of the spike protein that we um, bind to, that our antibodies bind to, to try to clear the, uh, the virus itself. So this is concerning. Now, the vaccine can become a backstop against these variants really getting more of a foothold here in the United States, but we need to, we need to quicken the pace of vaccination. And so I think the vaccine strategy that we had a month ago or two months ago needs to be rethought now in light of these new variants. And the goal should be just getting as much vaccine into arms as possible, as quickly as possible. You, you, to that end, a lot of doctors now, I don't have to tell you, are talking about reducing it to just one shot. Listen to what Dr. Ashish Jha is saying. There's pretty good evidence from the clinical trials that the that it, one dose is effective at least out to four weeks and probably potentially longer. So I think that this is not a huge stray out of the clinical data that we have. Uh, it certainly would potentially save a lot of lives. What if we went down to one dose? That That would mean doubling the time in which we can get double the people vaccinated, wouldn't it? Well, I wouldn't necessarily advocate um, changing the vaccine schedule. What I think we ought to be thinking about doing is pushing out more vaccines. So right now they're stockpiling about 55 percent of all the vaccine that gets produced because they're stockpiling the second doses and they're also stockpiling this safety reserve. I think we could be pushing out more of those doses and relying on future supply to uh, suffice for getting some of the people who've been vaccinated now their second dose three or four weeks from now, rather than stockpiling those doses right now. That doesn't mean we, we shouldn't stockpile anything. Maybe we have to stockpile 25% to bridge people to that second dose. But we can be relying on the manufacturing that's going to be coming online this month and next month to supply some of those future doses and take a little risk that some of those second doses may be delayed. I don't